The fact of the matter is if you have access to a few nutrients that you can get from the diet, this is important, but also supplements and taking your vitamins every day, um, you know, not again, not uh, the, the magic solution, but certainly a step in the right direction to be able to um, boost the nutritional value of your existing foods or to expose yourself to nutrients that you may not be able to readily get in your existing diet. And of course, we're very concerned about this for populations that don't have access to a diversified diet. But by extension, they often don't have access to the multivitamins that are going to, you know, bridge this gap. So, you know, what do we do? And this is like one of the million dollar questions we're thinking about in the health equity and access to care space is how do we get um, the diversified diet and also the nutrient density to the populations that need it? And while it's very important to think about our global populations and to think about extreme poverty, to think about the sustainable development goals and all the nations, global north and global south, so not just low income nations, but high income nations like Canada, how can we start to bridge the gap on on poverty and hunger and overall health and well-being SDGs 1 2 and 3 when you know we can't ensure that our populations can get access to food in the first place these seem like lofty goals but they're important to have and they start to when you start to look at them you really dig deeper into why are there access issues and and how can we bring certain types of um, nutrients into the diet and diversify the diet and there while this is something that we see a uh, lack of diversification in diet in um, lower income countries, we see it happen right here in Canada in low income neighborhoods. So you just need to look at a map of Toronto and the fast food retailers uh, to see at a moment's glance what we're talking about in terms of the disparities and the access issues. And students are really fascinated by this information. So they really care about this and they want to make a difference. They want to work with and volunteer with agencies that care about it. Um, and then the question becomes, how do you do it? How do you enact it in your day to day life? So I know a lot of people are interested in um, teaching and living in the Anthropocene era, you know, and how are we going to deal with climate change? And what about the jobs that we don't even know exist, you know, decades into the future? And this really comes from asking the tough questions now about where do we want to be and what can we imagine the world to be and how might we be able to take small steps now that are not just the band-aid solutions. And sometimes those are necessary, those band-aid solutions to buy you some time, but don't leave them at the band-aid solution and try to think about um, the system systemic change that you can impart. Yeah, what I'm really hopeful for when we think about the pandemic is that um, students have often thought, especially science students, that medicine is the only thing that they can do to impact change. And now with the pandemic, we've seen what epidemiology can do, public health, global health, civil servants, and just the average person with an idea and an impetus. And so, you know, it really just needs to be um, advocated and encouraged among our students that you've got the tools right now. We believe so much in this university education and we tell them to keep doing more education and eventually you'll be good enough to be able to contribute to the conversation when really if we believe in the education we're giving them then they have the tools right here and right now to be able to be making those changes and, and making a difference in the world around them. I would say that what we were talking about earlier. It's that you often have so many of the tools and resources at your disposal within yourself. You have this um, amazing university education that has taught you a multitude of skills, whether you're cognizant of them or not, such as that communication and the networking. And you have a short time to be able to interface with the university as an undergraduate student. So I would say you know, be a sponge, soak up opportunities, talk to people because you never know when that conversation might open doors to other conversations, other people, other networks and opportunities you may have. And, um, you know, as far as the barriers talking to professors or people in administration, uh, we want to hear from our students. We're excited about that. And maybe we have our own trepidation around or uncertainty around how to navigate those conversations or invite them into those conversations. So just like with your own physical self, you have the ability to um, promote your physical um, endurance and strength and capacity by, like I mentioned, getting up off this chair without holding on to anything, sitting down at a table without touching anything. 
um, being centered on your breath and trying something like square breathing. Um, just to be mindful of the fact that you also have the cognitive tools to do the things that you want to do and um, it never hurts to ask. You, you, it, it's amazing what you can accomplish by asking. And when I've shared this with some of my students, they've gone out and done the bold thing to get on LinkedIn and just message a perfect stranger that they would just love to talk to. And uh, one of my students loves to tell this story to my other students and I encourage her to share it, which is she reached out to somebody at the World Health Organization and in a couple of weeks she was having a conversation with a world leader. And so I think that if anything we've learned in, in the last couple of years is that um, there are no bounds, there's no barriers. You don't need to have a global health international education where you can uh, hop on a plane and experience somewhere else in the world in order to experience that place or those people. So I think um, that's what I like to leave students with, just knowing that you've already got so many of the tools to be able to make a difference on your day to day, as well as on other populations. And you can begin to do that work today. And remember that, you know, you're, <laughs> you're going to pass this on through, uh, through your own lineage and your own biology is going to make a big difference just based on what you decide to have for lunch today. But not to put so much emphasis on that, that you beat yourself up if you went and got your, you know, your favorite fast food, but to keep in mind that you do have more control than you think on the outcomes.